welcome, be in the garden, be in nature. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my channel. If you appreciate what it is that I show on my channel, then I'd be so grateful if you would be able to share it with some friends, others would appreciate it. It's really about my journey in the garden. I trust that you are well, I certainly am. So this is the gunnera. Beside the pond, the pond will need some cleaning at some point later on in the year after wildlife has gone. But, um, it's really looking very, very filled. There's very little surface space actually here, but the plants have done a great job this year. And I have seen the toads. The bees come here to feed, as you saw in a previous video. And um, other beneficial insects. We've had some dragonflies emerge from this pond and this is not too far from the pear tree which is producing pears in abundance here and I look forward to consuming those later on in the season. Plenty of pears. The apricots have given us fruits again this year as well. Um, and not long before we can harvest those. The quince tree. is also doing well if you remember the beautiful blossoms from earlier on in the springtime but the quince is putting on a lot of growth in the size of its fruits the plum tree has a lot to offer so this is really laden with fruit and in between you can see the quince let me see if I can get the camera in between some of the foliage. But here we have plenty of plum. Plenty, plenty of plums. By the bench, we have some raspberries. But there's one right there with my name on it, waiting for me to pick. Oh, that's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. And mm, beautiful. 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 Absolutely beautiful. So we have some raspberries to pick. The strawberries have been enjoyed this year and are already putting out the runners which I will plant and create new plants from. I told you about the Jerusalem artichokes. They are absolutely overtaking this greenhouse over here and many of them are in excess of six feet high. I'll show you this one, hold on. This one here, just in front of the bee, bee, the, the beehives, is oh, I'd say at least at least eight or ten feet tall. Um, it's got the little side shoots as well, but this one here is a huge Jerusalem artichoke. It reminds me of the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. It really does, and um, we'll just keep following this and watch it until. It produces the flowers and the bees. Oh, look at this. Isn't it evening? So it's around 7.30 p.m. And the bees are coming home. Look, this is them guarding. They are absolutely guarding 
the, the entrance. Whereas the hive next door, which is also full of bees, there are very few guards on the entrance. But clearly this hive here are guarding their bees, sorry, guarding their hive and uh, in case there are any robbers. So that's quite interesting to see. Okay, we have some grapes. They're still young. They are going to now just really start filling out with water and growing inside. So we have some grapes, several bunches of grapes in here. So I'm very happy about that. We have some fennel over here um, with their traditional aniseedy smell. Great stuff here. Nasturtiums, but I haven't seen the flowers of any of these at the moment this year. I just haven't had any of the flowers of the nasturtiums, but we have been picking and eating the leaves. If you're not familiar with them, they're peppery-ish. Pe yes, they are actually. They're quite peppery to taste, but they're beautiful chopped up in salads. We've got the currants, black currants here. Um, next to that, we have another apple tree. Again, different variety and they're doing really very well. This plant here, if you've not seen it before, with this uh, magnificent fuchsia inside, the leaves are edible raw. Um, this is a tree, tree spinach. Tree spinach, yes. I've planted this once and they come back year after year after year. Uh, incredible, incredible color. But these can be just consumed as a normal spinach and they, drop seeds and come back year after year. Now check out these blueberries. They've done so well this year. They've done so, 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 so well. And we have been picking these um, through the last, definitely the last couple of weeks, actually. They're all maturing at different times, but we have plenty of blueberries. And I know you're asking me, let me taste them just so that you can get an idea. Look at them, they're beautiful, aren't they? Different blueberries, let's pick a few. Organic, fresh from the blueberry bush. No pesticide, no herbicides. We'll just blow off. There we go, let's have a taste. Ooh, I dropped one and I dropped another. Hold on one second. Let's get this right. Give them a quick wipe on my jumper. Blueberries. Let's have a taste. You have to trust me when I say, um, I know I shouldn't speak with my mouth full, but they're absolutely delicious. There's another one. Let's have that one. Organic. Natural. Pesticide fee. Perfect blueberry. Absolutely delicious. And so that's such a, a great investment. If you see the price of blueberries in the shops, um, this is a great investment. They come back year after year after year. Happy with that. Look at that. This garden bed had the cherries and they've all but been consumed or eaten by the birds. There are a couple there that have um, whittled away and not really edible anymore. This apple tree didn't do very well, I have to be honest. Um, as you can see, I've shown you many of the apple trees that have done well this year, but this particular one is the one that was um, grafted. And in a previous video, I'll show you how I pruned it back. But again, only one side of the three grafts. So this tree is grafted. There are three different varieties in this tree, but really for the second year running, only two out of the three branches or three two of the three varieties have done well um but hey you know never you never know we have to keep going maybe next year we'll get a different uh, outcome but it is doing well two out of the three 
grafted limbs are doing well. So two out of three is not bad, huh? Two out of three ain't bad. So we're just gonna have a look around and see what's growing at this time of year, July. A bit breezy. That's the September charm in flower. And that's the Boston Ivy. Big size leaves. And the next few weeks, I should imagine, certainly next month or so, it should start to turn red. This is one of the bigger apple trees that we have. And you can see again, it really is um, laden with apples here. So this is one of the bigger, more mature apple trees that we have. And we're looking forward to the harvest of apples from this tree. Beneath we have some more blueberry bushes, but they are potted up in ericaceous or acidic soil. But again, in abundance, there are loads of blueberries. So as I said before, it's definitely worth um, the investment. Uh, and we have been picking from these blueberry bushes. And I think we're sort of not coming to the end, but certainly it's lovely to pick a few each time we're out in the garden. and enjoy. Delicious. Do you remember the banana plants? Yay! How can you forget? Look at her. Look, 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 look at her. Oh, look at her. Look what she's doing. She is tall. She is maybe 11 feet tall at present. And um, she's not only survived the winter, she's done well through the spring. And her pup's smaller. And she's still got a way to go. So this one here is the banana. Look at the creation of this plant here. The detail. Wow, 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 mesmerizing, right? Definitely. And beside her is the magnolia. The hosta's not looking great, so true transparency. Despite my efforts of putting them in a pot raised well off the ground, well off the ground, the slugs and snails have had a good time in this flower pot here. The wild strawberries, tiny, tiny, tiny little things. In fact, you can just about observe one here and it's not, it's not even quite as big as my thumbnail. My tiny finger now they're tiny but we've had a couple of these a tiny tiny um we've got the sorrel my little herb garden um, we have some stevia we have some uh, oh how can i forget this one is we've got some beets evian primrose and some more strawberries lots of thyme I will be pruning this uh, wisteria back again, actually. I pruned it back in February and then we had the lovely flowers and I will be pruning her back again, probably at the end of this month. We are in July. We have this tree to look forward to. This one here is the liquid amber or the straw rosifera. And uh, its foliage doesn't look like much at this time of year but in the next few weeks certainly the next month or so uh, as the weather does start to change in fact you can just about make it out of the tip of this one leaf here these leaves will start to change yellow 
and then candle and it will look absolutely magnificent in the autumn sun the liquid amber so really i just want to thank you for coming along and watching this video it's really just an update of what's happening in the garden we've got here some jasmine and the fragrance of those are really powerful they you know it, it, you can smell it from the kitchen and the first part of the garden so this one's the jasmine i believe this one was jasmine clotted cream and the foliage is a beautiful lime color green and the flowers these tiny tiny flowers give off an amazing aroma at this time of year. We have the lavender, just beginning to fill out. And the bees adore this plant. And I like that they like it. So we have plenty of lavender here, more clotted cream, jasmine, in abundance, in abundance, in abundance and more lavender in abundance, in abundance, in abundance. The sarcococca, not much at this time of year. And oh, do you remember these here? Look, these are the canna lilies planted earlier on. Do you remember when the president came to the house? I planted it up actually with some of these uh, uh, pink or red clover. So I like that. I just want that to be the under story of these canna lilies. of the almond on our almond tree, a few have shriveled, the squirrels have won and taken some, we've enjoyed them, and there are just one or two remaining on the almond tree. The tree is putting on some new growth. True transparency, the globe artichokes were doing so well, and then more recently, something has, uh, I should imagine, a slug or a snail has managed to decimate, and I mean decimate, its foliage. So perhaps this year we won't get the beauty of the globe artichokes, the flowers that are thistle-like, but I will look forward to seeing them look better next year. This end of the garden is really left for wildlife and you can see some, well, people would normally call them weeds, but certainly some wildflowers that have seeded themselves amongst some potatoes. You more or less know when the potatoes are ready, when the flowers begin to show. And um, I'm looking forward to revealing these potatoes in due course. Along the side of the garden, it's towards the back, the rear of the garden, where I created a path, as you will recall, and the, the bench, which I removed just to put down some tiles underneath. You will recall that I made this path a while ago, and um, this is the back of the garden, and you'll see the bench that I tidied up earlier on in the season. At the back of the garden here, we have some anemone, or September charm. We're in July at the moment and these flower year after year after year. They do come in different colours. The ones we have here are the baby pink. Uh, 
Um, and just behind there, we have one of several of our apple trees. And I'd say that the apples themselves are possibly the size of a 50 pence piece. So in terms of size, they are about the size of a 50 pence piece. We have a formium back here, um, the tricola, which is the three colours within the leaves. That's the formium. And we have another apple tree. I can't always remember the names of the apple trees, but we have planted several. These apples are a little further along than the one I've just now shown you. And the sizes of these ones are maybe twice the size, about twice the size. But it's, it has plenty of apples on this tree. And uh, it's quite a tightly conforming tree, yet it is producing sufficient apples for us. Um, I wonder if you can recognise the back of this garden because there is the crate that I made into a habitat, into a, a I put some chicken wire or some mesh wire over three crates and piled it high with logs and that's just to sort of encourage nature's habitat. We have some catmint here and this is prolific so this grows and grows and grows in fact i've pruned this back i've chopped this back several times this year and it just keeps on producing behind we have a young silver birch the bark isn't silver just yet but in the coming years it will begin to become more of that silver white color that we've known to grow and love but the foliage is lovely and not too far away so it is quite closely packed next to our beautiful Puna Cirello and again you can just begin to see the beauty of its bark behind the Puna Cirello we have that Ganoa if you can recall in that video I spoke of, I said, have a look at the bird table and use that as an idea of how quick and how big the gunneras will grow. So um, I think because this place is quite tightly packed, actually, it's not put on as much growth as I would have expected, to be honest. Look at the colour of this canna lily, the foliage in this one. It kind of reminds me of the banana plant. Would you agree? Absolutely incredible. Yeah, the canna lily. Perennials, so they'll die back, but they'll come back year after year. And I just under underplanted that with some daisies. The agapanthus are beginning to flower. This is interesting because this one here is the dark purple, but actually when I planted them, I did plant them all as the white agapanthus, but they've come back to their true form, which is the deep purple. And they're small just, just now, but they will fill out and become huge baubles of fun. So they're just bursting out of their flower sacks. They're just bursting out. And the poppies have come and gone and as you know i'm going to wait to save these let them go nice and dry save the seeds and scatter them and have some wild flowers in the back we have the carpinus and the lavender which you saw earlier on okay so i want to say from me to you thank you for joining me in the garden your time has been appreciated and i look forward to seeing you in the next video in the meantime enjoy the summer enjoy the outdoors enjoy and be enjoy being with each other enjoy some open space if you can enjoy your garden your balcony enjoy your parks the woodlands thank you so much for joining me i'll see you in the next video take care